asked me to go over to his house at 10 o'clock at night, and I'm like, hell no, I'm not going nowhere. I told him to tell 10 o'clock at night, because I don't want to be stopped by the cops. You know, uh, he wants me to come drinking and, and all that stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay home. Ironically, guess what happened? In July, two years ago, I believe, William was stopped by the police while he was already parked. And I guess he had been drinking. But he was, his car was parked, or his truck was parked, and someone in the neighborhood had called the cops on him. So when the police showed up, William, um, you know, like got to an altercation with the, the police, and um, the police beat him up, cracked his ribs. William lost his life. William lost his life due to police brutality. No one talked about it, it's not really much on the media, but that's what, and I was like, okay, God, this is, um, this is brutal. Why would, you, why would you do that to my friend William? Right, but it goes to show you, his last name is Perez. It goes to show you that, you know, even by your last name, you are targeted. But we don't talk about this stuff because we mask. You know, a lot of people don't believe I have autism because I grew up in a Caribbean home where mental health is not even a subject, it's not a topic. And, you know, and if you have something like it, they want to, you know, uh, brush you underneath the rug, they don't want anyone to find out, right? And we've also, if, if I had a meltdown in my home, I would get beat. So we develop different ways of coping and different ways of handling autistic symptoms. That's why black folks go underdiagnosed within the autism community because we don't show the signs of autism.